Scientists worldwide recognize the phrase bar body, which heralded a new era in the research and diagnosis of genetic disorders. Mari Llewellyn Barr, born near Belmont, Ontario, received his doctorate from the University of Western Ontario in 1933. Following the Second World War, Dr. Barr would soon join the medical staff at Western. It was here in 1949, while working with graduate student Ewart G. Bertram, that they noticed the nuclei of female nerve cells had a dense mass of chromatin, something male nerve cells did not. It was a very early um, stimulus to the discipline of medical genetics. It caused quite, a, uh, quite an interest, apparently, in the biological world and people studying um, cell structures that you could actually identify a difference in the cell. He didn't name the bar body the bar body, by the way, as you think you probably know. I'm not sure where it came about, but other people writing about it referred to it as a bar body, and that's what kind of stuck. I think he was a little embarrassed by that. Because uh, Bertram Mann was his student, and it was between them that they recognized that, uh, that what this material was. He really didn't want them to identify it in his name, and I think that says a lot for Dr. Barr. Further research indicated these sex differences occurred in the cells of most mammals. This discovery enabled Dr. Barr to determine whether or not there were certain chromosome defects in an individual. I think it became more apparent that, that a lot of these developmental errors uh, weren't just by accident. They were caused by um, structural abnormalities which had developed either uh, during life or passed down from generation to generation. Specifically, Dr. Barr's work led to a greater understanding of and ability to manage certain disorders associated with mental retardation. This work was recognized by the Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. International Award in 1962 one of numerous such honors. He was a tremendous help to me to work with the university and uh, to be my sort of uh, liaison with Western and to introduce me and, and uh, CPRI to, to, the, uh, to the area. Dr. Barr's contributions extended both to educating a generation of medical students in neuroanatomy while furthering basic medical and clinical research. And I do recall the evenings before he would have a lecture for the next day with the medical students. Um, that he'd be pacing up and down in his den and um, timing his lecture and pausing where there's going to be a slide. And uh, it just struck me the fact that, that uh, a lot of preparation really makes uh, a lecture sound like it's, it's quite offhand, and yet it really wasn't. The manual that he wrote that we used as medical students uh, was so clear and concise. It was the best thing that was available at that time for us to uh, study neuroanatomy from. That book uh, was um, translated into many different languages, became a standard neuroanatomy textbook throughout the world. I, uh, I was taught with that book. Um, people going through Western for many years have had that book uh, as, their, as their sort of neuroanatomy Bible. Dr. Murray Barr died in 1995 but the legacy of the Barr body and his devotion as a teacher live on. He was a very warm person in, 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 in his private life, and, uh, and certainly as a father, that's the way we would, we would remember him. We all had enormous respect for him, not as the discoverer of the Barr body, but as the, uh, the, the father of you know, four children and, and somebody we were very proud of as a person. He was a man who had high principles, and uh, those who worked with him and his family uh, tried to keep up with our principles as best we could. He was always willing to, uh, to lend a hand and support to, uh, to others. Uh, I think he was very fair in his dealing with, with people and certainly with us. Um, he remained very humble though and, and quite shy throughout his, uh, his career and he actually uh, avoided publicity I think uh, as best he could.